Good afternoon to you. Mark Sada, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion for Friday, the 5th of October 2018. You know, it was a year ago that we were talking about the incipient system that would become Hurricane Nate, and it was almost in the same area down here in the Western Caribbean Sea, the area that is prime for development this time of year, climatologically speaking, so it's no surprise that we have a system here now, Invest Area 91L, and it is poised to become something it does look like in this vicinity and become a problem with impacts for the Gulf Coast sometime next week. The probability of development over the next two days, 40%, 70% over the next five days, and within five days it could be close to making landfall, it does look like. Here's what it looks like graphically. Uh, the five-day outlook, and we of course have Leslie up here, which is a non-event, except, and I was right yesterday, I didn't know for sure, but I saw where they mentioned that swells would be emanating out towards Atlantic Canada. The Canadian Maritimes actually got mentioned in the headline today. In fact, I'll show you. Is it in here? Public advisory? I'm just tooting my own horn here just for a second. See right there. Uh, waves from Leslie expected to increase along the coasts of Atlantic Canada and New England, actually. So I got that part wrong. I wasn't suspecting that New England would be in on the action. But yes, you folks up here could have some waves coming out from Leslie. So be careful out there if you're headed to the beach. All right. So let's take a look at the broader picture. This is Sergio. This will be a problem for some place over here in about a week's time and we you know we need to make sure we keep that in perspective as well you know the flood risk it's hard to pinpoint who's going to see what amounts of rainfall but the forecast track for Sergio does bring it back towards the Baja and then eventually that moisture will spread into parts of the southwest United States and northern Mexico then of course we have 91L down here in the Caribbean Sea part of this central American Gyre, C-A-G, a fancy way to describe this broad area of energy or low pressure that's just generally circulating down in this region, trying to eventually close off and become a more consolidated piece of energy, which we would then call a tropical depression or eventually a storm more than likely. And you can see that reflected here from a few tweets. Here is from Tyler Stanfield and... Uh, does it do the yeah who is that OU meteorology student all right so this is somebody who I look to for guidance myself I like to broaden out I don't know everything I talk about that often and I readily admit it that I do not know everything I'm a physical geographer that's my degree I'm an earth scientist but I'm not a meteorologist and so some of these meteorology students and yes they are incredibly smart uh, I mean just to be a meteorology student are you kidding me? That's incredible. It's like engineering with a ton of math and physics thrown in. Um, and then the degreed meteorologists, some of them PhDs, some of them masters, some of them just a BS. Honestly, folks, it really helps when you can sort of form a consensus from what other smart people, because I'm smart, but I don't know everything. So if we look at what Tyler's saying, uh, you know, pointing out what we see, but it's interesting because you can watch this as it's happening on the satellite picture that he says that the potential for the development of a tropical cyclone has continued to increase as we watch this low pressure area just northeast of Honduras and you can see that right in here see that broad turning just right in there just to the north part of Honduras here strong upper level winds are still prevailing but you're starting to see this rotation vorticity concentrate in the vicinity of the Gulf of Honduras the Northwest Caribbean Sea and of course James Spann he is in the Birmingham Alabama area roughly right that market Tuscaloosa and uh, you know the interest that he has uh, for Gulf Coast residents along the Alabama and Florida Panhandle Mississippi too I'd imagine a lot of people follow and watch what Mr. Spann says and he too on top of this you know screen grabs explaining what we're kind of talking about here a look at some of the model guidance uh, very early very early we'll get a much broader perspective of the model guidance over the next little while this is the GEFS what is that the ensemble 
forecast system. And generally speaking, the ensemble mean right up in here to the Big Bend area of Florida. And that's a dangerous area for storm surge. We remember that from Hermine. Uh, and this is not a pinpoint accurate, you know, this is exactly what's going to happen. And let me just see if it'll, no, I can't zoom in on that particular image. That's all right. Let's see if we can just blow up the web page. Yeah. Whoops. <laughs> Maybe I blew it up too big. I have broken my web browser. But the bottom line is tomorrow, when we have more of the specific hurricane models run, uh, we can take a look at some of these graphics here and get a better idea. I don't want you to think, oh, that's the forecast, and it's headed for the Big Bend of Florida. It could be anywhere from Mississippi to Tampa at this point. And when we say it, I'm going to catch myself saying that. That's the center. All of these lines that you see, those are for the center of circulation. They tell us nothing of the rain bands and the tornado threats in the right front quadrant, usually. In those rain bands, they tell us nothing, those squiggly lines, of the storm surge risk, which is elevated for the Gulf of Mexico, period. And they tell us nothing of how much wind we might see and rainfall and things of that nature. So keep that in mind when you see these plots, no matter who they're from and no matter what context they are putting it in, it's just one run. It's just one model. It is very important to remember this one most important aspect. Those lines are not for the impacts. Those are for the center, the eye if it develops one, the center of circulation a small geographic dot, just like that, on a map. That's it. Those are what the lines represent. Where is the center forecast to be? All right, so looking at some of the diagnostics, if you will, let's analyze the potential. All this green, 29 Celsius, probably some embedded areas of 29 and a half to 30. On this particular resolution, though, a wide area of 29 degrees Celsius, which is plenty warm, for a, an intense hurricane, no doubt about it. We know that, okay, telling you the obvious. In terms of upper ocean heat content, wow, lots and lots of it down here. But even up close to land, it doesn't drop off to nothing. Uh, it's at the lower end of the scale. But there is plenty of undisturbed upper ocean heat content available, even this little island of it right here, a little bit elevated. So there's definitely enough energy in the, uh, the ocean, the Gulf of Mexico, to fuel a hurricane. But remember, you know that is the word that people sort of look for the most. And I get that. It's a sensational word. I use the reference of Jaws uh, frequently where the mayor talks to the police chief that, you know, you say barracuda, and people, you know, what, what, whatever. But when you say shark, it's the same kind of thing. Tropical storm, yeah, people pay attention, and it's, oh, it's a tropical storm coming. You say hurricane, and it obviously gets a lot of people's attention, more so than usual, perhaps. But we have to remember that a hurricane is more than just about the wind. Well, how strong is it going to be? When people ask that, they're asking about the wind. They need to be asking, what are the total impacts going to be? And for all of these areas through here that this could impact, I don't know. We're going to have to wait and see. It could be anything from... 40 to 60 mile per hour wind to a category two hurricane that's not out of the realm of possibility okay and from a couple of feet of storm surge to 10 feet or more these are all reasonable expectations when we don't even have a name system down here yet so pay attention to it stay on top of it and we will react accordingly unfortunately we're not going to have 10 days so we need to be ready to prepare to do what we need to do to protect ourselves from anywhere along this area uh, in the coming days. All right, I'll be on top of it with video posts, probably two per day starting tomorrow, and then, of course, on Twitter. I'll talk about that at the end just to remind you. So real quick, let's go over the models, all right? We'll just compare the European, <clears throat> the uh, GFS and the European. We'll start with the GFS. Catch my breath here. This is the 5,000 foot level or 850 millibars. And just to point out what's what, nice area of high pressure. It's in the 90s here underneath that high pressure, sinking, deep layer ridging. And this is the energy associated with our Central American gyre down here north of Honduras. And of course, this menacing 
bullseye is Leslie, but Leslie is turning out to C and will not be a problem. So let's just move this forward through time, and we see that the GFS through 48 hours there starts to consolidate this just to the east of Belize and then stays offshore, becoming quite intense through the Yucatan Channel here at about 84 hours out, and it continues to consolidate and move into the Gulf, kind of pin ping-ponging, whatever, going back and forth, bouncing along the west side of the ridge over here, coming around the back side. Not any kind of a uh, huge trough digging in like this, and that's important. There, there could be some strong upper shear, but not like when we see these giant longitudinal troughs coming in to boot something up. Uh, we think of Nate last year at the, at the exact same time, roughly. Um, this is more coming around the backside of the ridge here. I mean, there's a weakness over here because that's why this is able to come north, but I'm not so sure of what the shear is going to be, and that's going to be the, the key here, the, uh, the upper level winds. So the GFS is obviously seeing something and is bringing this together as a uh, hurricane into the panhandle of Florida by about day five and a half, roughly, okay, 132 hours out. And just to show you, it moves it on into, unfortunately, the southeast into the Carolinas, where we absolutely don't need any more rain. Ugh. So I have to show you this because we have to be prepared for the full picture here. This is a week out. Now, it doesn't matter in one sense if it's a hurricane at this point. If it comes in as a big rainmaker and still ends up over here, it'll still be a big rainmaker. We will address this more uh, going forward eventually. Okay, so that's one scenario. Now if we look at the European at the exact same time frame, this is the ECMWF, there's the initial con conditions with the monsoonal gyre, the Central American gyre, there's Leslie, etc. It's depiction of the deep layer ridging. So we put this into motion. Now this is every 24 hours or so, unfortunately. We don't have the kind of resolution uh, that the GFS has for time series, temporally as they say. So this is this morning, this is Saturday morning, Sunday morning, Monday morning, Tuesday morning, right? Yep, Wednesday morning, Thursday morning. So a very similar location for a landfall and it looks like it's intensifying as it does so. So that's a key element. When does that happen? Why does that happen? And then, of course, we follow this through. That's um, Thursday morning, Friday morning, and then it kind of dies out. And then, oh boy, <laughs> yeah, it just keeps on going, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, and I'm not, you know, when I laugh like that, it's the laugh of desperation, just like, or despair. And I say desperation, it's like despair oration, right? Not, I'm desperate. <laughs> it's like, oh, uncle crying uncle here seriously this is ridiculous you know but look we got to get through it this is very important we're in a climatologically favored time of the season we're in a favorable upward motion pattern the pattern is tilting towards more favorable and that's what's important we're not tilting towards less favorable okay and that could be problematic so i'm going to be on top of this uh follow along on twitter at hurricane track I have great news about our app, the Hurricane Impact app for Android. I'm going to put it back on the Google Play Store, and the Twitter part of it is not functioning. I know that, but we're getting ready to revamp it. But instead of waiting and hoping we get it done in time and then putting it out there, I'm going to go ahead and put it out there again. I took it off because it had a couple of bugs where the live video wasn't playing properly. Well, we have solved that for 90%. I can't say it's 100% because I don't know. There's so many different Android devices. But a confident 90% plus of Android users should be able to see live video, assuming I'm going to be out on the field next week, which I think it's looking pretty likely. So uh, you will be able to follow along the blog, etc., all the other news and information on the app, on Hurricane Track on Twitter, and then our patrons, of course. Um, I do a lot of sort of first access inside information whatever exclusive not inside it makes it sound like i'm hiding stuff but you get to get an inside look at things is what i'm trying to say and real quick i got 
sort of, I guess you would call it my paycheck today from Patreon. And it really, really meant a lot to me to see that show up in PayPal. That's how you get paid if you're a Patreon creator. Uh, and it literally is helping my family. I have spent a ton of money since late August from Lane through Rosa in Arizona. And yes, I do work with the Weather Channel. I'm freelance. They don't pay everything. They're not, I'm not salary. I'm not Jim Cantori. But I'm not complaining either. It does help. But you folks, the individuals who have become patrons, you made a big difference today that I'm going to be able to pay some bills and support my family and continue to do what I do without stress. And I mean it from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. I know not everybody can become a supporter. I get it. But those who can and who have, you have made an impact on my family and my ability to work. And I appreciate that. And that puts me in a real good mood because that makes me not stressed. Okay? And so that helps because throughout the weekend, I'll be able to have the energy without having to stress over it to keep putting these updates out because this is important. We could be coming into a time period here of some pretty intense activity. I'm not sold completely on it, but if it does, we've got to make sure we're all on our game. So thank you very much for your help out there. All right? So... Um, Tomorrow morning, and then tomorrow afternoon, early evening, I'll have updates. One on Sunday, because I still have to go out to Rodanthe and grab my camera from Florence at the Rodanthe Pier. Uh, but then Monday, it's probably go time, to be honest with you. So we got a lot to do, folks. We sure do. And thanks for coming along with me as we experience all this together. That's it for me for today. Have a great rest of your Friday and a great weekend ahead. I'll be on top of this doing what I do best. Thanks for being with me. I'm Mark Sutherth, HurricaneTrack.com. I'll talk to you again tomorrow morning.